Did you know that humans around the world produce a total of 4.6 trillion pounds of solid waste each year? This is equivalent to the weight of not one Empire State Building, and not even two, but rather 6,571 Empire State Buildings. When converted to square footage, this amount of trash can cover the entire state of California plus some. In fact, the average American produces roughly three times the global average, with each person making about 1,700 pounds of garbage every year. But let's take a closer look at the impact our trash has by examining the waste produced at Princeton University. In 2019, Princeton University produced a shocking 4,303 tons of waste, with over half of this amount being sent to landfills. Although recent measurements suggest that the university has succeeded in reducing our landfill destined waste, such information may be misleading as the vast majority of students did not live on campus during the second half of the spring 2020 semester as well as the entirety of the fall 2020 semester. In fact, the pandemic has negatively impacted our waste production, particularly during the spring of 2021. This semester, 2,821 undergraduate students moved into on-campus housing. All students were required to have the unlimited dining plan, meaning that students' primary source of food came from Princeton's dining halls, which switched from using normal reusable dishware to plastic takeout containers due to public health-related restrictions. This means that on average, each student has used two plastic meal containers from the dining halls every single day between the move-in deadline on January 24th and the end of classes on April 27th. Thus, it can be approximated that nearly half a million plastic containers were consumed just by campus dining throughout the past semester alone. In February of 2020, Princeton sent a total of 204.8 tons of waste to the landfill. At the time, 5,162 students were living on campus, meaning that the amount of waste landfilled per student was approximately 79.3 pounds in that one month. During the February of this year, Princeton sent 200.5 tons of waste to the landfill. However, only 2,821 students were living on campus, meaning that the total amount of waste landfilled per student increased to 142.1 pounds. When drawing a comparison between this number and last year's statistic, we can see that the amount of waste sent to the landfill per student nearly doubled. Meanwhile, the amount of waste that was recycled dropped by 16% between years. Thus, the pandemic has significantly increased the amount of waste produced per student and decreased the percent of recycled materials. But where does all this waste go? Princeton University sends its waste 20 miles away from campus to the Tullytown Landfill in Tullytown, Pennsylvania. Over 50% of the population living around the landfill is categorized as low income, and 49% of these citizens were never able to complete their high school education. The EPA's 2020 Environmental Justice Screening and Mapping Tool combines environmental and demographic information to highlight which environmental factors contribute the most toward low-income and minority residents nationwide. According to EJ Screen, the levels of particulate matter in the air plaguing those who live near the Tullytown landfill are double that of Princeton's. Similarly, both Tullytown's Toxic Respiratory Hazard Index and its citizens' lifetime cancer risk from inhalation of air toxins are over one and a half times those of Princeton and its inhabitants. Thus, by producing massive amounts of waste every year and sending it to the Tullytown landfill, Princeton University and its students directly contribute to serious environmental inequities that harm low-income citizens in Tullytown, Pennsylvania. But what is being done to address this environmental injustice? In September of 2020, New Jersey passed a bill requiring the state to prohibit the distribution of permits to large recycling facilities, medical waste incinerators, landfills, and other facilities that pose health and environmental risks that wish to be built in certain overburdened communities. No longer will economically disadvantaged areas of our state be dumping grounds, and no longer will the rights of residents to clean air and clean water be overlooked. 
Princeton University has also taken huge steps to reduce its overall waste production through resource recovery, a program that diverts university waste from landfills by selling, donating, recycling, or redistributing furniture, electronics, and office supplies that departments no longer use. Similarly, the Office of Sustainability's Move Out program helps reduce waste produced by Move Out each year by approximately 30%. In 2019, this program was able to divert 13.1 tons of materials from the landfills for reuse and donations. As students of the university, we can reduce our impact on the environment and on nearby marginalized communities by participating in these campus sustainability programs, replacing our single-use plastics with reusables, and writing letters to our deans and representatives asking them to continue passing regulations surrounding waste production, consumption, and disposal. By reducing our own waste and advocating for sustainable legislation, we can reduce our overall carbon footprints as the manufacturing, distribution, use, and disposal of products all release greenhouse gases that contribute to the climate crisis we are living in right now. In fact, the EPA estimates that the simple act of increasing our national recycling rate by 5% would reduce greenhouse gas emissions by an amount equivalent to that of the annual emissions from electricity consumed by about 4.6 million households. Although our individual actions may seem small, if we work together to reduce our waste here at Princeton and in our broader communities, we can not only decrease our greenhouse gas emissions, but we can also halt our harming of the environment and marginalized communities around us.